It's time for The Verdict. The Verdict is a lively discussion of current events and legal issues pertinent to Oklahomans. The Verdict is hosted by Kent Myers and Mick Cornett. The Verdict is brought to you in part by Betcher, Martin, Jean, and Jackson, when hurt people need help. Betcher, Martin, Jean, and Jackson in Ponca City. It's time for The Verdict. And welcome once again to The Verdict. I am Mick Cornett, and I am joined by one of Oklahoma's top legal experts, Kent Myers. Kent, what do we have today? We have, uh, uh, we're going to get the answer to this question. What say you, Mike McCarville? <laughs> uh, Mike is going to be on with us again. We're always pleased to have him. And uh, we're going to be talking about the uh, United States Senate race here in Oklahoma, in Oklahoma to, to pick the successor to Don Nichols. We're going to be talking about... Uh, Perhaps some of the hearings that are going on in Washington now on 9-11, uh, what did they know and when did they know it type things. But Mike's always um, an enjoyable guest, and uh, we don't really know where the discussion <laughs> will go once he comes on the set. But the, we're glad to have Mike McCarville. The opinionated Mike McCarville of KTOK is coming up next right here on The Verdict. Welcome back to The Verdict. Mick Cornett with Kent Myers, and Kent's going to introduce our guest. Always glad to have back Mike McCarville making his fifth appearance on The Verdict. Uh, Mike uh, is the host uh, very recently of McCarville in the Morning on KTOK, a uh, show that starts at 5.30 in the morning and goes till uh, 9 o'clock uh, uh, five days a week. Uh, he's a longtime Oklahoma journalist, uh, has program director of KTOK, We've had him on many times, and today, Mike, uh, we're certainly pleased to have you back. Is today the show the paycheck starts arriving? <laughs> yeah. I mean, as, as often as I've been on. I mean, you guys have been in business three years well, now. It takes the ten, honorarium. It takes ten shows to kind of make Whoops, sure that make I can't sure you're say honorarium real. around the mayor, can I? <laughs> no. I guess I better be careful. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome back. Thank you, sir. Kent, uh, Mick, my pleasure to be here. Good to have you back in the seat, Mick. Well, thank you very much. Hey, Richard Clark is in the news this yes, week. Yes, uh, Little Dicky Clark, yes. Wrote a book making some allegations. Yeah. What do you think of all that? Serve and tell. I hate it. Don't like it at all. Serve, serve your government, serve a president, serve multiple presidents, and then write a book and try to tell all. Mm -hmm. uh, the problem, I think Dick Clark's got a couple of problems. Number one, he writes a book that's fairly critical, I guess you could say, of President Bush and the Bush administration, Condoleezza Rice, everybody involved in the administration, Yet in his resignation letter to this very same president, he praises him for his handling of terrorism, for his <laughs> handling of 911. Now, what is the real story here? And what's behind the timing of the release of the book? Uh, when was this book originally scheduled to be released? Well, it wasn't mid-March, I'll guarantee you. Uh, so you kind of got to wonder. I mean, I've got a real question about the, the political motives uh, behind it. And I don't know Dick Clark from Adam. He may be a fine human being. I don't know. But he has sure opened himself up to a lot of questions, mm -hmm. for sure. Well, let's let's change the subject off Dick Clark. We're going to be watching those hearings. One thing about these hearings, though, I just have to say I watched a little bit of it uh, recently, and it seems like the senators and representatives, of, or the representatives of this commission, uh, ask longer questions than the than then they the get answers. answers. Yeah. Well, and, and almost everyone who asks a question has an agenda. Yep. Uh, embodied in the question, don't make any difference, Democrat, Republican, they've all got a little bit of an agenda going. It's kind of interesting to watch sometimes, but it wears one out. You know, they've Trying never, to keep up with the nuance. They've never accused Mick or me of doing that. Yeah. Really? Yeah. Oh, I'm sorry. Oh, oh I guess they have. <laughs> <laughs> At least not on the air. Not on the air, that's right. Yeah. Uh, let's talk about the Oklahoma Senate race. Oh, and, let's do. And uh, what I'd like for you to do is start out, and we're going to ask you about each candidate and uh, give us what you think uh, are the strengths or the positives or the uh, likelihood of election uh, of each candidate. And then on that same okay. candidate, talk about the other side of the coin, the weaknesses, the uh, vulnerability, and so on. Let's start on the Democratic side with Brad Carson. Very good. Well, first, let me say, there are four candidates, I mean, four people who have said they're going to seek the Democratic nomination. 
Monty Johnson, an attorney from Salisaw, whom nobody knows. Right. Uh, he's not going to be able to raise enough money to be much of a factor. Jim Rogers from Midwest City, another known name politically, not going to be a factor. So then we get down to Congressman Brad Carson, current congressman from the 2nd District, and State Insurance Commissioner Carol Fisher, who says he's going to run despite all of his problems. Uh, personally, I don't think Carol Fisher is going to be much of a factor. The Democratic nominee will be Brad Carson. Last December, I had occasion to be with Congressman Carson at an Oklahoma Rifle Association banquet. I watched him for the first time, Mick, work a room. Mm -hmm. I was impressed. 300, 350 people, I bet he shook every hand three times. <laughs> Never stopped. Hit every table, and he wasn't doing poly talk. He was just visiting with people. And he left there, and everybody had kind of a warm and fuzzy feeling about it. So I think uh, uh, Brad Carson is going to do pretty well. Now, here's what he's got to be careful of. What's his strengths, first of all? Well, I, I, clearly, I mean, his people strength People always is, talk about his intelligence. Yeah, no, what, what else he, is there to Obviously, he's an incredibly smart guy. And he's been a, he's been he, a guest here on The Verdict. Too. I know he has. He's he, sat he, in that very chair when he has, he's sitting. Whoops. He has taken the right... <laughs> I don't want a Democrat to rub off on me. He has taken, <laughs> he has taken the right position on, on a number of key issues in this mm -hmm. state. Let's harken back to 1994. He's a member of the NRA. Exactly. Thank you, Kent. Harken back to 1994 when Jim Inhofe beat a, uh, a pretty tough uh, uh, Democrat uh, in that race. What was the issue that helped Jim Inhofe carry, what, nearly every county in this state, including the heavy, uh, heavily Democratic <coughs> areas? Yeah, gun control. Gun control. Guess where Brad Carson is on gun control? He's again it. He's a member of the NRA. He's a member of the ORA, the Oklahoma Rifle Association. Uh, he talks the talk. He's he an enrolled the member of the Cherokee tribe. En enrolled member of the Cherokee tribe. So, so a lot of strength there. On most issues, he is much more in line with the thinking of conservative Oklahoma Democrats than he is with any <clears throat> national uh, party, uh, which is considerably the left, I think. Uh, we would agree on that. Uh, so so Car even on issues where Carson gets pressure from his leadership in Congress to vote with him, he more often takes the conservative, in most cases, therefore Republican side of an issue. So I, and what he has done systematically, and it's interesting, he has eliminated a lot of things from becoming issues in this race that a Republican, for example, in, in a race could use against him for the conservative versus moderate to liberal, uh, the balance thing. So I think, uh, I think Carson's a pretty strong candidate, bottom line. Can he raise uh, locally Democratic money? Yes, and is. Mm -hmm. And will, and he'll have a lot of national money. What are this his is going to be a top priority weaknesses? race. Uh, I, he's a Democrat in a state that, uh, since uh, in recent years anyway, mm -hmm. uh, has been electing uh, Republicans uh, to national office, vis-a-vis uh, -vis the Congress. However, Brad Carson being an exception, and Brad Henry uh, being an exception, being elected governor. Uh, I think that was a little bit of a different situation. We've discussed that, but uh, so Carson is a Democrat. However, the key to that is he is perceived right now as a conservative Democrat. And in this state, that means he carries so many of these heavily Democratic counties, large and small, and that means he's eminently electable. Uh, should we even consider uh, Carol Fisher? I don't. I think uh, Fisher may well get into it. I, as I say, I don't think it could be a player. I think if the election were held right now with four Democrats in it, Brad Carson would uh, be the walkaway uh, nominee of the party. No runoff needed. Well, go ahead. I was going to say, let's jump over to the Republican side before we take a break. Oh, boy. I knew uh, you were going to say that. <laughs> what about Linda Murphy? What's she going to do? Uh, Linda Murphy, Tulsa businesswoman, been on the ballot twice as a candidate for superintendent of public instruction. 49.7% of the vote mix she got in one of those runs. So she's had statewide ballot exposure, granted a few years back. Does she have the financial resources to become a real viable statewide candidate? Frankly, I doubt it. I don't know. Uh, she's got Pat Hyland up in Tulsa, who's a well-known, very conservative Republican operative, uh, working with her and helping her. Uh, and if she stays in, if she is indeed a candidate after the filing period comes, uh, she'll be a factor. I'm not going to say a major factor at this point in time. Okay, let's take a break, and then we'll come back, and we'll look at the okay. Republican heavyweights. All right. Mike McCarvel on The Verdict. We'll be right back.
Welcome back to The Verdict. Mick Cornett and Kent Myers. Mike McCarville is our guest. Let's uh, we'll continue our discussion on the uh, senatorial candidates for the state of Oklahoma's race that have a, a primary this summer and uh, the main election in November. And we'll start with Tom Coburn on the Republican side. What are his strengths? Former What's Congressman Tom Coburn. Uh, obvious strengths are he's been uh, on a uh, district-wide ballot in the northeastern part of the state, and he was elected in a heavily Democratic district. So he's demonstrated more than once, obviously, that he can appeal to Democrats, conservative, moderate, what have you. Uh, I think his experience in Congress is a plus, given his record. Very conservative, a guy known for speaking his mind, and uh, most people in this state love plain well, you know, talking they say political they like figures. That. Do, do we really like that as I a think voter? so, but, okay. but it depends on what part of the state you're in. Hmm. I think people in the southeastern, southwestern, western part of the Oklahoma really like plain talkers. Uh, and in the northeastern part. I'm not too sure in the metro areas they're, they're, they're not quite, they're, it's a different kind of thing. Mm -hmm. uh, I think some of that, some of their directness is, is uh, perhaps taken away just by all the, the clutter uh, that one encounters in, in the metro areas. Uh, Coburn, I think, is going to be able to raise a substantial amount of money. He'll be a major player in this race. Okay, his weaknesses are what? Uh, I think his weaknesses uh, are that a lot of people uh, perceive him to be a little boneheaded, a little hard-headed, a little um, too prone to act unilaterally without consulting, for example, with a professional campaign manager, with a kitchen cabinet who can guide him in a campaign, and kind of doing what he wants to do. But of course, that's also, on the other, on the other hand, one of, one of his attractions, one of his strengths. This is a guy of conviction. Mm -hmm. Tom Coburn tells you something, book it. He's going to do it. That's exactly what he did when he term limited himself. Well, yeah, he limited himself to three terms. And, and, and he said, I'm aside. gone. And then he writes a book and rips them breach, in Washington. Breach of trust. Breach of trust. And uh, the book's doing pretty well, I hear. Well, let me ask you now about Bob Anthony. Bob Corporation Anthony. Corporation Commissioner. Corporation Commissioner Bob Anthony. Uh, statewide ballot multiple times. Mick been in office and Kent been in office what, 15 years, the Corporation Commission. Pretty well known. Uh, at one time, he was uh, the Republican uh, on a statewide ballot who had garnered the most votes a Republican had ever gotten. He is known as a maverick. Uh, he is known as a guy who uh, really doesn't pull very many punches. Uh, he has uh, tried to portray himself, and I think accurately that he is, a uh, protector of the consumer at the Corporation Commission. He's been there a long, that's a long time to serve in a public office uh, out at the Corporation Commission. I think he'll be able to raise a substantial amount of money. Uh, early on, got a professional uh, campaign management team aboard. Uh, and I think uh, based on what I've seen so far is doing the things necessary to put yourself in a position uh, to catch Mo and get going in a campaign. Mm -hmm. Yep. And uh, his weaknesses? Uh, a little, somewhat like Tom Coburn, uh, known as somewhat of a maverick, uh, a guy who really doesn't take counsel very well from uh, anyone. Uh, and uh, I don't know how he's going to do as an on the stump candidate. Mm -hmm. uh, and this has nothing to do with Bob Anthony personally, it's just some people uh, seem to be made for the stump in a political campaign. Uh, Tom Coburn, I must say, uh, is probably better than Bob Anthony, but we've seen people get better in these campaigns. Mm -hmm. Bob Anthony may turn out to be dynamite on the stump. I don't know. Okay. Well, Kirk uh, Humphreys. Yeah, Kirk Humphreys. Former mayor of Oklahoma City. Uh, some strengths first. Uh, Kirk Humphreys uh, obviously served the Oklahoma, uh, city of Oklahoma City and served well by almost all accounts. I think people would agree. Uh, we'll have access to a whole lot of money. He's already outraised everybody. Uh, he's well connected. He's got U.S. Senator Jim Inhofe in his camp uh, from day one. U.S. Senator Don Nichols, Tom Cole, John Sullivan. He's got this litany of people who have lined up to help him. But in a way, that's worked against him. And that gets to one of his, his big weaknesses, I think, is that a lot of people in the Republican Party, i.e., those who vote in Republican primaries, those being conservative, church going Republicans, believe that someone tried to anoint or coronate Kirk Humphreys without asking their opinion. Mm -hmm. And while he may have done a good job as mayor of Oklahoma City in Godibo, in Tulsa, in Buffalo, that's not necessarily a plus. Does he need to distance himself from an I, Oklahoma I, City I think label? he does, but how does he do that, Mick, uh, when that is his uh, claim to any kind of political uh, credibility? He was elected in Oklahoma City. Keep in mind, this is a, this is a large state when you start traveling around and doing campaigns. This guy has been elected only within the confines of Oklahoma City. All these other people have much broader experience on the ballot. Two of them, Anthony and Murphy, on the statewide ballot, not once but multiple times. Coburn, 2nd District, multiple times. Kirk Humphreys, mm -hmm. 
Oklahoma City ballot. Big difference. Well, let, let's get to uh, push this crystal ball in front yes, of you Yes, I'm going to gaze into it now. Yeah, let's do a little prediction okay. here, and with reasons. Yes. Uh, the first is probably a little easier based upon what you've already told us about who's going to be the Democratic nominee. Brad Carson. Okay. Book it. Book it. All right, let's, let's don't spend any more time on okay. that. Let's talk about the Republican side. Who's going to be the Republican? Well, first of all, who, who will uh, be in a Republican runoff? Who's going to be in a Republican runoff? If I had to bet money right now, I would say Humphreys and Anthony. Uh, but you got to keep in mind, with all my predictions, I'm the guy who thought Don Nichols was going to run last in 1980. So, well, you know. So did Andy you know, Coates. Hear me now, believe me later, or whatever. Yeah, so did Andy Coates. You got that right. See, I, I, here's what I think shaping up, guys. This could be a nightmare for Republicans. Brad Carson is going to be the nominee of the Democratic Party. He's going to be able to hold on to most of his money, and it's going to come pouring in here because it's a national priority race. The Democratic Senatorial Campaign Committee is going to do everything they can to help him. On the Republican side, you got the possibility of a four-way primary with four pretty solid candidates. Uh, so you face the prospect of a contentious primary, then a contentious runoff, because in this field, there will be a runoff. I mean, it, I mean unless I'd be amazed. Unless they pull I was Mick amazed, Cornette. I was amazed by Mick Cornette. <laughs> yes. But uh, I, I don't see it happening right now. So, so what that's going to mean is, while Carson is coasting, saving his resources for the general election, the two Republicans that are left standing mm -hmm. are expending their resources, uh, probably slugging it out. So how scarred up are they going to be? Uh, when they come out of it. Who knows? Yeah, well, you know, we tend to we tend to handicap this geographically. You know, oh, we I always know. talk we about we yeah, got two Oklahoma sure. City candidates, yeah. we got candidates from the Northeast. What are the issues? How are we going to separate the candidates by the issues? <clears throat> On the Republican side, I'm not sure we're going to be able to do that. I, it, it could come down to a personality contest, uh, name ID, and ballot recognition. Again, keep in mind, this is a mistake a lot of people make when they talk about these political races. They think of the electorate as a whole. Doesn't happen that way. This is a first, a Republican primary. Mm -hmm. Conservative, Christian, Republican voters. Mm -hmm. They don't act like any other voter anywhere else. <laughs> and they get real picky. So the perception of Kirk Humphreys, the perception of Bob Anthony, the perception of Tom Coburn and Linda Murphy, this is what forms uh, their, their motivation to vote and for whom they vote. So issues sometimes got to get shoved aside. Uh, I mean, for, they, they, may, they may pick up on one thing. They may say, well, you know, Bob Anthony, and it may have nothing to do with what they're running. Bob, Bob Anthony, he's, you know, he's, he was a pretty outspoken uh, against uh, partial birth. He's all in favor of partial birth abortion ban. And maybe one of the other candidates was not quite as outspoken. I mean, it could hinge on something mm -hmm. like that. Because in this field, I don't see that there's going to be a huge difference on, on the key issues. I just don't. And, and even beyond that, in a general election with a conservative Democrat like Brad Carson, how is it that a Republican nominee positions himself or herself to uh, effectively campaign against a guy like Brad Carson? We're out of time. Give us a hint. When we can we find Mike McCarville on the radio? Uh, that's 5.30 to 9 a.m. weekdays on the news radio 1000 KTOK. <laughs> okay. Mike McCarville, we appreciate you coming on The Verdict. Thank you. My pleasure. Always. Thanks, Mike. Thank Kent you. and I'll be right back. Welcome back to The Verdict. Mick Cornett with Kent Myers. We're here to wrap up another show. Always good with Mike McCarville. What say you, Mike McCarville, is a, is a caption I hope we'll use many more times because I hope we'll have him back a lot. The Senate race in Oklahoma is just going to be fascinating, and I think uh, I can tell our viewers we uh, fully expect to have all of the uh, major senatorial candidates on our show individually. And then perhaps when we get into a runoff situation, pr probably on the Republican side, we'll try to schedule a, uh, a debate, and certainly in a general election context, we'll try to schedule a debate. 
Uh, our uh, third year anniversary show is coming up uh, next week with uh, Jimmy Lynn, a uh, nationally and internationally known trial lawyer and an Oklahoma City resident. He will be good, and you'll want to hear what he has to say. It's been a, a good three years so far, Mr. Mayor. It has. I want to thank uh, Mike McCarville from KTOK for coming on our show. You can enjoy him on the mornings on KTOK 1000. And I invite you to head to our website, theverdict.tv. Log on, tell us what you think, and tell us what you'd like to see on a future show. For Kent Myers, I'm Mick Cornett. We'll see you next time on The Verdict.